Hi everyone, Cara Santa Maria here. I am a huge dinosaur nerd. I love visiting them in museums across the country, but in lots of cases, the portrayal of these giant beasts is almost as antiquated as the bones themselves. Once you put up a dinosaur skeleton, it's very, very difficult to take it back down again. There are actually some very wrong dinosaurs that are still up in a lot of institutions. If you go to the American Museum of Natural History in New York City, you'll see dinosaurs that have broken tails and broken backs. They're still dragging their tails. They're still looking as they did in the early 20th century just because it's impossible to remove Remove them from the plaster and from the armatures that they were put on. That's Brian Sweetek. He's a dinosaur expert and author of My Beloved Brontosaurus, the story of a popular culture icon that's warmed the hearts of children for over a century. Unfortunately, Brontosaurus isn't a real dinosaur. Scientists began figuring that out over a hundred years ago. When Brian first met the mighty Brontosaurus as a young boy, it had been a whopping 80 years since the scientific community stopped calling it that. 80 years! But there it was, in a dusty museum, label and all. As I was sort of walking by the, the Brontosaurus skeleton, you know, myself just maybe knee-high to the dinosaur itself at best, I just remember looking up and imagining what it would be like to actually see the animal sort of fleshed out, to hear it breathing, to see it moving, you know, how this animal actually lived. And then when I got home and I started, you know, looking into uh, you know, all the books that I had and, you know, talking to my teachers about dinosaurs, you know, I wasn't crushed by it, but I found out that Brontosaurus wasn't a real dinosaur. <laughs> it, you know, it was this chimera that uh, had come together because of sort of fossil mistakes and you know, hypotheses that later turned out to be incorrect. It's a classic Bone Wars era story. The Brontosaurus is, in fact, an Apatosaurus. But it took scientists a while to realize their mistakes, and by then, it had captured the imaginations of millions. There's a species called Apatosaurus ajax that the Yale paleontologist O.C. Marsh named in 1877. And it was a relatively incomplete specimen, but it was one of these long-necked, heavy-bodied sauropod dinosaurs. And the following year, his field crew working at a place called Como Bluff in Wyoming found another skeleton of a similar dinosaur. Now back then, you know, most dinosaurs that were found were very fragmentary. There might be as little as a piece of a tooth or part of a bone. So if there's any difference whatsoever, paleontologists like Marsh and his rival Edward Drinker Cope based out of Philadelphia, they would name a whole new genus or species on the basis of basically the tiniest scrap if it seemed like something new. So it's really no surprise that when Marsh got the skeleton of Wyoming, that he decided to name it Brontosaurus. He gave it a different genus name. So those two names stayed in the literature for a couple of decades. And along comes paleontologist Elmer Riggs in 1903. He's doing a revision of the sauropod dinosaurs. He has a look at both of them. He says, you know, really, these are really, really similar. They're different species. There's Apatosaurus ajax, and there's Apatosaurus excelsus. But they're so closely related that there's really no reason to split them out and have a different name. So he put that out in the literature in this major monograph in 1903 and nobody cared. <laughs> nobody paid attention to it, or if they did, they didn't show any sign of it. Museums kept putting up brontosaurus skeletons. They kept naming these dinosaurs. Brontosaurus illustrators kept putting out brontosaurus illustrations. So this was the dinosaur that the public got introduced to, and because of its size, you're dealing with an animal that's you know 60 plus feet long in many museum exhibits. It's absolutely fantastic. It's not like anything anyone's ever seen before. So you know, brontosaurus, this dinosaur that should be dead, becomes the icon of the Jurassic and for many dinosaurs in general. So even though it's in the literature and paleontologists actually know that the proper name is Apatosaurus, to most everybody, it's still Brontosaurus. And it's more than just the Brontosaurus. To this day, we see mistakes in popular culture. T-Rex still stands upright when we now know his posture was nearly horizontal. In Jurassic Park, Dilophosaurus had a giant frill and spit poison when there's no evidence of venomous dinosaurs or that Dilophosaurus look like that. And really, in terms of bringing dinosaurs back to life, there's nothing better than the movies, that you know, movies bring dinosaurs back to us in a way that we can really only imagine. When the desire to please your fans and the desire to be as accurate to the science as possible, Clyde, science doesn't always win. The Brontosaurus, a moving mountain of flesh and bone. One of the greatest things about science is that it's always changing based on new evidence. But it's hard for us to let go of our emotional ties to what we once knew to be true. I have friends who are still bummed that Pluto's no longer classified as a planet. It's still there, folks. It's always lived in the Kuiper's belt. It hasn't gone away, just been rebranded, if you will. Same thing with our modern view of the theropod dinosaurs. We now know that lots of them were covered in feathers, fuzz, or fluff. The director of Jurassic Park Ford, in a very short and curt tweet, said, no feathers, JP4. 
Now mind you, this is about 20 years after paleontologists found some of the first feathery non-avian dinosaurs. I mean, we know now birds are dinosaurs. Many of the traits that we think of as being bird traits, you know, laying eggs, nesting behavior, air sacs in the skeleton, and most of all feathers, evolved millions and millions and millions of years before amongst the non-avian dinosaurs. I mean, even Tyrannosaurus rex itself, you know, the king of the tyrant dinosaurs, was probably influffled to some degree. Uh, but chances are that we're not going to see that in Jurassic Park 4 because fans don't like it, because people like me, but maybe a little bit misguided, people who love their dinosaurs just so very much want a naked Tyrannosaurus. They can't deal with the feathers. How long do you think it'll take before our romantic vision of the dinosaurs catches up with modern science? I say bring it on. You may be surprised to find that when it comes to these incredible giants of a bygone era, truth is often stranger and more fantastic than fiction. So come on, talk nerdy to me.